In this problem, we would like to understand how the quantum capacitance, or a capacitance measurement in general, can be used to measure the density of states of a two-dimensional electron gas. To this uh, end, you uh, are given a structure that consists of a piece of gallium arsenide um, in which a two-dimensional electron gas is embedded. This could be in a quantum well of any other material, for example. And this structure is grown on a substrate which uh, incorporates a degenerately doped backgate. So essentially this is a metallic backgate. And um, a metallic top gate has been evaporated on top such that we have a gate from both sides. Now the usual way of um, working with such uh, structures is to use the field effect which requires that we apply a voltage between the 2D electron gas and one of the gates, in this case the back gate, and this voltage VDC is a static voltage that is applied which will induce a certain density in the 2D electron gas. Of course such a um, system um, can in any measurement be grounded at any point. So here we have um, decided to ground the two-dimensional electron gas um, and therefore we apply relative to ground to the back gate the voltage VDC. Now in addition, uh, and this is now uh, required by our desire to measure capacitance, we modulate the back gate with a modulation voltage UAC and we hope that this will give rise to a modulation of the induced charge on the metallic top gate which can be measure as measured as a change of uh, a charge in time meaning a current IAC using this ammeter connected between the top gate and ground. Now an important uh, property of the circuit that we have to realize is that since this ammeter is a low impedance measurement device, it essentially connects the top gate to ground so that the voltage between top gate and two deck will always be zero, unlike the voltage between two deck and back gate. But this doesn't of course mean that there cannot be an induced charge on the top gate as we will see in this problem. The first question we are asked to answer in this problem is what current would we measure in this ammeter if we replace the 2D electron gas by a, an ideal metal or by a metal plate and we would do this experiment of modulating the voltage on the back gate. Now in case we had an ideal met metallic plate here, um, this system of two deck and back gate would essentially be a parallel plate capacitor. And we know that metals screen electric fields perfectly, so all the electric field lines that would emerge from the back gate due to the applied DC or AC voltages would end in the metallic plate uh, which we put here in the place of the two deck and no electric field lines could penetrate into uh, the region of the top gate and induce any charge here. This means that the current that we would measure if we applied a metal instead of the two deck would be zero. So the answer to question number one is IAC is zero due to perfect screening of UAC by the metallic plate. Now in the second step we would like to understand 
what in what uh, sense things are different now if we go back to the two-dimensional electron gas instead of the metal plate and the difference is that the 2d electron gas of course has a finite density of states and therefore may have a finite ability to screen electric fields so the hope would be that somehow the screening properties of the 2d electron gas depend on the fermi uh, on the density of states at the fermi energy and therefore depending on the size of this density of states more or less electric field lines would penetrate the 2d electron gas and arrive at the top gate which would essentially give a more or less measurable um, ac current on the top gate so how does this work in order to understand it i have prepared a little energy sketch where we see um, a vertical cross section through the structure so this is the vertical cross section and on the vertical axis of this diagram we have energy so i've drawn a band alignment or band lineup for the structure so when we start at the back gate the back gate is a metallic system which has a certain electrochemical potential which is indicated by the dashed line we call it mu back gate then there is a barrier between the back gate and the 2d electron gas which is our gallium arsenide material um, and then there is a, a 2d electron gas here which is um, has a certain electrochemical potential mu2 and due to the fact that we apply a voltage between back gate and two deck we have a difference in the electrochemical potentials here which corresponds to the voltage in addition we have another barrier um, and the top gate here the top gate is again metallic has a constant electrochemical potential but since the two deck and the top gate are connected um, via the uh, ammeter in the setup the electrochemical potentials in these two subsystems must be the same there cannot be any voltage difference between the two now we would like to understand how we can use this energy diagram to describe the electric fields in the structure and to work out the induced charges that may form at the interface between the insulator and the back gate the induced charge in the 2d electron gas and the induced charge in the top gate and from these induced charges we will derive expressions for the currents so how do we go on we will essentially um, walk in energy from the back gate to the two deck and um, find that the electrochemical potential of the two deck is reached from the electrochemical potential of the back gate by first moving down um, the electric field that is present between the two due to the applied voltage between the two and this is a uh, property of the geometric capacitance so the field will be given by um, or the voltage drop will be given by e times the induced charge density on the back gate divided by the geometric capacitance c back gate which is essentially given by the geometry the separation between the back gate and the 2d electron gas um, and the dielectric constants so this is in fact a capacitance per area um, of this back gate capacitor okay so we started here then we went down by the electric field induced due to the voltage given by this expression and then of course we also have to move up by the fermi energy by a certain amount and all the rest is given by uh, material properties so there there is a built-in uh, potential step in the structure here which has a certain uh, size 
um, and there is a certain potential step down um, on the other side of the barrier which has a certain size which is a material property so these two quantities combine to some constant which is currently not known to us uh, and it will turn out to be irrelevant for the uh, purpose of this experiment so to repeat this idea we go from the back gate chemical potential we move up a constant that is independent of any uh, voltage in the system then we move down the electric field given by this expression then we move down by another constant which we put into this constant term and then we move up by the Fermi energy which is related somehow to the density uh, in the 2D electron gas and this brings us to the mu of the 2-deck, the electrochemical potential of the 2-deck which by uh, definition is our zero reference of energy. So let's call this equation 1 which already contains um, uh, two unknowns First of all, there is sigma backgate, and there is the Fermi energy of the 2-deck, which we have to work out somehow. The electrochemical potential of the backgate, in fact, is given by the voltage that we apply between backgate and 2-deck as minus elementary charge of the electron times this voltage U, and this voltage U is the sum of VDC and UAC. We can play a similar game going from the electrochemical potential of the 2-deck to the electrochemical potential of the top gate. So we can state that mu top gate would be given by mu 2-deck which in fact we have defined to be zero. Then from this mu 2 deck we go down by the Fermi energy so this means we go down by minus E Fermi then we move up by a constant band offset which we put into a constant then we move over and have a certain electric field hopefully and this electric field is now of course given by the total charge, the charge accumulated at the interface of the back gate with the insulator and the charge given by the 2 deck. Just imagine we put a Gauss box um, with one end face in the back gate and the other end face in the barrier between 2 deck and top gate. This Gauss box would enclose the charge density at this interface and the charge density at the, two, at the two deck and since the back gate internal electric field is zero uh, the electric field at the top face is determined by the total induced uh, charge which is given by the expression E times sigma back gate plus sigma 2 deck divided by um, C top gate so again we went from here went down by the Fermi energy which is this term we went up by a constant offset which is here we went down by a certain electric field which is here we went down by a constant offset which is incorporated in this constant and then, then we went, went up by the Fermi energy um, in the back gate to reach mu top gate which is also a constant um, because this is a metal. So this is um, our second equation um, but we have at the same time introduced new unknowns. We have the Fermi energy in the back gate induced density already in the first equation but now we also introduced the 2 deck uh, induced um, charge density which somehow of course is related to the Fermi energy. Now this relation can be written down. The charge density in the 2 deck can be expressed as minus the charge of the electron 
times an integral over the density of states between zero and the Fermi energy um, of the density of states of the two deck d of e integrated over energy. So this is our third equation and in principle we see that now we have three unknowns being sigma backgate, the Fermi energy and sigma two deck and we have three equations to determine these quantities so the problem is already uh, well um, solvable. Now of course at the end we are interested in the current flowing from the top gate into ground so we would like to know how the ch induced charge on the top gate changes and this induced charge can be worked out from the charge neutrality condition. We know that charge neutrality implies that sigma back gate plus sigma 2 deck plus sigma top gate is equal to zero. This is clear from the fact that if you put a Gauss box around the whole structure where the end faces of the Gauss box are in the back gate and in the top gate where you have no electric fields then the surface integral of this Gauss box is zero implying that the enclosed charge, total charge, must be zero and this is the charge neutrality condition which is our fourth equation. So now we have the unknowns sigma back gate, sigma 2 deck sigma top gate and the Fermi energy in the 2D electron gas. Now for solving this problem um, in terms of the induced current that we measure uh, with this ammeter, we are interested in what happens if we have a small modulation of the voltage UAC. So this comes into our four equations at this point where the voltage appears and there is a small modulation, delta U, let's call it, um, that would give rise to some uh, changes in the quantities E Fermi um, and the sigmas, the three sigmas in the problem. So in order to work uh, these changes out, we essentially take the differential forms of these four equations as the basis for further calculations. So from the first equation, taking the differential with respect to u, we get um, minus e times delta u plus e. Now this delta u will cause some change in the backgate um, induced charge, delta sigma backgate divided by the capacitance C backgate and this change delta U will induce some change delta E Fermi of the system. But this constant which contains these offsets between the different materials will be unchanged by a change in voltage so this term disappears is zero in the differential form so that this is the new equation 1 prime. We do the same thing for the second equation. The 2 deck is 0. The Fermi energy will give rise to a minus delta E Fermi. The next term gives rise to elementary charge times delta sigma back gate plus delta sigma 2 deck divided by um, C top gate. The constants containing the offsets between the materials are independent of delta U so this constant will be in differential form 0 so this is our second equation 2 prime. Now the differential form of equation 3 um, would look very simple. Um, on the left hand side we have delta sigma 2 deg which is equal to minus the elementary charge and now we have to ask how does this integral change if we have a differential change in the Fermi energy and of course 
this would essentially give the density of states at the Fermi energy d of E Fermi times the change in Fermi energy delta E Fermi uh, in this case. Now remembering that the quantum capacitance was defined as elementary charge squared times the density of states, we may rewrite this um, expression as minus 1 over the elementary charge times the quantum capacitance CQ times the change delta E Fermi, um, which is our equation 3 prime. Now, the last equation in differential form is also quite easy to obtain. Small change delta sigma backgate plus small change in delta sigma 2 deg plus small change delta sigma top gate would be zero and this is equation number four prime. Now these four equations can be used to work out the unknowns delta sigma backgate, delta sigma 2 deg, delta sigma top gate and delta E Fermi. And we uh, don't want to go through the details of this calculation. Let me just um, give you the following um, idea. So the idea is that we change the voltage on the back gate in a time-dependent manner, such that we have a non-zero time derivative of the backgate voltage, which we may write as delta u by delta t, um, which is non-zero. If this is the case, we may have uh, or may define or calculate quantities delta sigma 2 deg divided by delta t or delta sigma top gate by delta t and it is easy to see that delta sigma top gate divided by delta t is the current that flows into the top gate um, per unit area. So in fact we have the expression I top gate, this is the desired current, per unit area A is given by the delta sigma top gate divided by delta T and this can be using these four equations be expressed as C top gate times C back gate divided by the sum C top gate plus C back gate plus C Q times the time derivative U dot of the voltage that we apply here via U A C. Now in fact you see that this expression for the current is nothing else but the conventional formula that we uh, have in capacitive current, that the current, capacitive current, is given by the time derivative of the voltage applied to the capacitor times a capacitance, and here we have a capacitance per unit area, and this gives rise to a current per unit area. Now, this effective capacitance, of course, is now uh, involving the geometric capacitances C top gate and C back gate, um, for example, C top gate would be equal to um, epsilon epsilon naught divided by uh, D top gate or C back gate, geometrical capacitance is epsilon epsilon naught divided by D back gate. 
So these are the geometrical capacitances, but in addition there is this quantum capacitance which contains the density of states uh, d of e of our system. So here is the point where the quantum capacitance came in. So in principle we could use this measured current I top gate knowing the area of our device to work out what the quantum capacitance of the system is if we know the capacitances C top gate and C back gate uh, of our system. Um, in fact this would allow us to determine the uh, density of states at the Fermi energy of our system and we could use the DC voltage in fact to tune the Fermi energy in the 2D electron gas uh, to different energies and thereby measure the density of states as a function of energy using the quantum capacitance. At the end let me mention a, uh, a handy way of getting more direct access to the density of states or the quantum capacitance and this can be achieved if we would in addition to the current through the top gate also measure the current induced in the 2D electron gas with a second ammeter. In this case we can use the same equations to work out uh, that the ratio I 2 deg divided by I top gate is equal to minus the quantum capacitance CQ divided by the top gate capacitance um, which in turn is equal to minus elementary charge squared times the density of states at the Fermi energy divided by the top gate capacitance. So this ratio directly gives the density of states or is directly proportional to the density of states at the Fermi energy of the two-dimensional electron gas. It's also interesting to think about what this uh, limit of the perfect metal corresponds to. What properties would the two deg need to have to resemble a perfect metallic plate? In this case we need the top gate current to be zero according to our reasoning that we did here and we see from this formula that this requirement corresponds to the quantum capacitance becoming infinite because then this whole expression becomes zero and there's no induced current and this in turn means that the density of states at the Fermi energy is assumed to be infinite. This brings us to the interesting conclusion first of all that if we treat the ideal uh, parallel plate capacitor we assume the metallic plates in fact to have infinite density of states in order to be able to perfectly screen and in turn this means that if any material has a finite density of states it will not be able to perfectly screen external electric fields there will always be some small amount of penetrating field lines that we may or may not be able to measure and we see that in our particular situation we will be able to measure the quantum capacitance once it becomes comparable to the involved geometric capacitances of the top gate and the back gate.